So I think we can move forward to the next presentation, which is the... Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you, Philippe. It's uh, very, very happy to be, to be here. Uh, we are going to talk now about uh, shoulder instability, I mean luxation and subluxation. It's not any more uh, chronic uh, pathology. Uh, what I must uh, admit that uh, you see in this uh, picture, the handball uh, female uh, team in my uh, area in Loire, they are very, very faithful because I am uh, their surgeon for no 20 years. <laughs> and they never change. So, okay. Now we are going to, to talk uh, about uh, shoulder instability. And uh, you see that there is two different cases. In uh, these cases, this shoulder is the dominant one, and uh, if you have the subluxation or uh, luxation of the shoulder, you are on the dominant shoulder. Probably the, the problem is a little bit different than in this case, if he dislocate or he has a subluxation of the opposite shoulder, it's uh, not really a normal, but it can, we can probably consider this uh, non-dominant shoulder as a normal one. So for surgery, it's very easy, finally, because uh, open techniques gives really, really good results. Even uh, in the literature, American literature, capsular shift, capsulography works very well, as uh, we are very popular, La Target in France, an open procedure, it's uh, very excellent. And for handball uh, players, of course, it will be the, the best uh, solution. But I am, as you know, the president of the French Arthroscopic Society, so I am. I have to find some argument uh, for uh, the arthroscopic technique, of course. It's uh, probably more physiological to uh, repair, to fix the cuff, to fix uh, the shoulder uh, arthroscopically. Because you understand better the lesion, you respect totally the subscapular uh, tendon, and as we have seen, it's very important to have a good uh, strength in internal rotation, and uh, you have less complication. You can also do that in day surgery. And uh, with arthroscopy, we do that so well. It's so beautiful. Look at this. We have a wonderful uh, description. This is a bankart lesion. This is uh, avulsion of the labrum, as we call the APSA lesion. You can also describe some uh, cartilage damage anteriorly. You can understand if you describe the cartilage damage, some pain after surgery. So you understand better the problem. You, we discovered during uh, the 80s, we discovered the agle lesion, that's instability on the other part, not on the glenoid side, but on the humeral side. And before arthroscopy, we didn't knew this didn't know that. So how we do? We make beautiful, beautiful surgery with uh, tissue mobilization. We prepare the tissue, we prepare the bone as well in order to have a good healing. And you see in uh, this, uh, when you finish your preparation, you can see here, it's, of course it will heal perfectly because you see uh, some uh, blood here. We are very, we take care to prepare the bone in order to have uh, beautiful uh, cells, to have a good healing. We do also a plasty of the inferior glenohumeral ligament in order to, to uh, correct the distension of the inferior capsule. And uh, you can see that uh, this technique is possible because with the new tools we have, with the new portal, also posterior portal like this, we can combine the suture in order to make the capsulography exactly as it was possible to do uh, with the opening surgery. So, you think I am a very optimistic guy and uh, with beautiful technique, I uh, will have wonderful results. What's it in the literature? It's not so good, not so good. Of course, you have some uh, optimistic surgeon, but it can be more than 30% of road dislocation after arthroscopic technique. And uh, it's not only I show you the, the, this uh, 
young uh, handball uh, players, and I operate her. It was uh, during the 1996, and uh, it was one of my first cases, arthroscopic. I was very proud, and uh, this is the X-ray after the, the redislocation. That's why, you know, it's not only to read the paper, sometimes to have an experience after 20 years, you, you see the things not uh, exactly as well. So, maybe it's not only an anterior problem. You have uh, ill-sax lesion, posterior, and uh, probably the ill-sax lesion can uh, explain the bad results we have. So, there is a remplissage technique described by Jean Wolf, and uh, I'm not sure, you know, it's difficult to, to be sure that with this technique, you, you can have a good results, that you can uh, avoid the 5% of road dislocation as we have uh, by opening uh, surgery. Probably, it's not only a technical problem. You know, surgery, surgeon go too fast to surgery. We are probably, we don't take time enough to examine uh, our patients. And uh, we are going to make a stop in this presentation to maybe to try to find a filter, something which says this patient is a good indication, this one is not good. That's uh, what we have done with the French Arthroscopic Society. It was a prospective uh, study, multicentric pros prospective uh, study. And uh, we use the EASYS score. It's a very simple one. It takes uh, two minutes, one minute, you know, in your uh, office, because you have few questions to ask to the patient. How old are you? If he's younger, or younger than 20 years, he, he takes two points. If uh, he does uh, sports competition, two points more. If it's uh, unlock or contact sports, one more point. Uh, no. And uh, if uh, he has hyperlaxity, one point. If he has bone lesion and uh, the glenoid or in Ilsax lesion, you have two and two more points. You see, that's, uh, it's uh, not very difficult to get some points in this classification. Is it possible to, to find it? With uh, asking some question, you're making sports, you're making handball and competition, so you are already in one question, four points. It takes uh, less, less than one second. And uh, of course, if you have hyperlaxity, it's uh, external rotation measurement, you get one point more. If you have bone disease with uh, a, st a standard X-ray like this, bone, uh, bone uh, defect here, you have two more points on two more points if you have an ill-sax lesion. So you see that the filter, it's uh, not so easy to reach, and uh, there are only a few indications for arthroscopic repair. Well, what was the results of our prospective uh, study? It was a multi-centric multi study with uh, 125 uh, patients. And uh, you will see the, in this graphic that uh, the global results are not very good. Because uh, after two years, after two years, you see that we have more than 10% uh, of road dislocation. And it never stopped. We are going now to, uh, to follow up our patient at five years, and uh, it's going down and down and down and down, and uh, it's not really, really good results. And uh, if you see this uh, graphic, you can see that uh, the very, very poor results are for patients who have only four points. And the good results, less than 10% of road dislocation, it's for patients who have only two points, less than two points. And uh, you can see that uh, finally, arthroscopic uh, solution, it's only for the very low level patient sports. It's uh, less than two points. And uh, even uh, if I like arthroscopy, even if I love arthroscopy, I have to say not to recommend for sports like handball, uh, arthroscopic uh, technique. So, I am sure that uh, Philip, uh, oh, no, no, what's that? Oh, sorry. I don't know what happened. Okay, here we are. 
I'm sure that I'm turning around. I'm singing a little bit a song, but I didn't give the answer. And Philip is going to tell me, but Oliver, tell us how to treat, how to, you tell, it's not arthroscopy, what to do. So I have to admit that uh, probably for handball, uh, latarge procedure, it's probably the best. We have to propose this for sports like not only handball, of course, for uh, rugby, for basketball, and for latarge procedure, it's probably the best one. And uh, in France, we have uh, Gilles Valls. You see this guy, he's still young, he never changed his technique. He stay with latarge, 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 and when uh, you ask him, but what you do if uh, you have a slap tear? I do a latarge. But what you do if you have uh, a strength? I do a latarge. And what you do, it's always latarge, and it works in his hand. So, but uh, there is latarge and latarge. We have to talk about, uh, of course, to avoid a problem with uh, subscapularis tendon. I think that the split of the tendon, it's uh, now uh, very uh, recognized. And you have to do the latarge properly uh, with the two screw in order to avoid the malposition of the coracoid process and also in order to avoid the malunion. You have to take your time to do that well and uh, not to be, uh, uh, to, to, uh, to be um, in the joint. So there is uh, probably a way to make the latarge. It's an uh, arthroscopic latarge. I must admit, I'm not doing this uh, procedure. I think that it's uh, very, very demanding. It's a very high level arthroscopic technique. And uh, in France, uh, we have a promoter and, uh, of this technique. And uh, we are uh, making a prospective study to compare the opening technique and uh, the arthroscopic technique for latarge procedure. And uh, you will see that uh, if you want to, I invite you in uh, Grenoble to have uh, the solution. But do you really, if I don't, don't really think it's uh, latarge for every situation. Maybe we have to do a difference. Probably for the dominant shoulder, latarge procedure is probably the best solution. But we can maybe, maybe I'm not sure, I opened the discussion, we maybe can think a little bit different for the non-dominant shoulder. For the dominant shoulder, I will go a little bit fast because we have an excellent lecture just before. And uh, I think that the surgeon had to take time and to examine a little bit more, more than he did before the patient in order to see the defect of internal rotation to see things before operate and to explain to the patient not to go direct and to do I'm going to make a latarge procedure. Probably this patient, even if he had a luxation or a subluxation of his dominant shoulder, he had chronic uh, pathology, overuse pathology uh, before the operation. So as well, we, have, we can find, as we see a previously, a uh, slap lesion. You can have uh, also a uh, calf tear injury or uh, you have to deal with uh, just uh, if you decide to make the surgery. You have also muscle inflexibility, retraction, retraction of the muscle and also unbalanced pathology with the muscle. So probably you have to, uh, to do something with a physiotherapist before the operation and probably after the operation because even if you had a subluxation or luxation, the problem is probably not uh, so simple as we think at the beginning and uh, it's not, you cannot resolve every uh, problem with only a coracoid process. For the non-dominant shoulder, maybe it's a little bit different. There is no chronic adaptation or uh, pathology and maybe in the first dislocation, first episode, maybe we can propose arthroscopic uh, repair. Maybe it's one of the, of the indication. You can see here at this uh, case, it was a bony, bony bankard. And uh, I, I, do, I did uh, this uh, patient for the first case in uh, not emergency, but it was uh, three days after his uh, dislocation. So it's not really a conclusion. I think it's uh, time to open the discussion because I'm not exactly sure, especially for the non-dominant shoulder, what I say. 
But I think that uh, what we have uh, to, to remember, and uh, we, we talk uh, about this all during the whole afternoon, is uh, that uh, we can maybe propose arthroscopic for the first episode of dislocation for the non-dominant shoulder, but for the dominant shoulder, probably la tangent procedure is much better, and uh, don't forget to, to search associate chronic or overuse lesion. Thank you again. Thank you, Philippe, for all things we have done together. Yeah. Oh, yes. One question because we are short of time. Short of time so, just one question for uh, Philippe. Yes? Thank you for your talk. I know your preference for arthroscopic. Do we ever, do you feel, and I don't know the answer, do we ever miss things because arthroscopically, of course, we're intra-articular, but any of the extra-articular pathologies or lesions, now that we're doing so much intra-articular with arthroscopic techniques, are there any things you think or any indications where you say maybe we're better for open even though it has other problems? You mean uh, to describe the lesion, to, to discover the lesion or to treat them? Yes, yeah, so both to, some of the lesions that may be extra articular and then of course they need to be treated. I think that uh, probably it's an healing, uh, healing issue in fact. I think that uh, when you do this arthroscopically you're not opening the, the shoulder, there is less fibrosis less scar tissue and probably this one of uh, because uh, uh, many techniques change that's why arthroscopic it's uh, for no 30 years every two years we change something but it never works <laughs> which is at the beginning we say okay we have just put the labrum on the glenoid it's not working so uh, you make trans we start with transglenoid and you say maybe it's not very good. Second technique, we put the labrum on the glenoid, it doesn't work. So we, we try to make a double row technique. Laurent Lafosse make double row technique. Not working. And now he moved for latage arthroscopy. Probably it's a, an ailing issue. Not sure. <laughs>